Hello, my name is Reno. Bulldog Unit 777 over here in Central Maine, over in the radio community. And today I'm doing a little cooking. I'm not shy to cooking, but my girlfriend, Country Girl, uh, she does a lot of the cooking here at the house and does very well. And her birthday was uh, in the middle of the week, and I'm going to cook her this homemade beef stew here. So today I'll be known as Chef Bulldog, right here in Central Maine. Well, one thing that's great is the internet. You can get on and you can find any recipe. You don't like that one, you just go on to the next one. So I did a search on uh, beef stew, and, um, and they all pretty much had similar ingredients. I chose this one here. This is from allrecipes.com and I've been on there before very nice recipes and uh, hey just go right at it here go right at it so before I start off I'm going to give you an overview of what I have here and uh, go from there <clears throat> and if you have a family or you're just a single person hey make this at the beginning of the week and you'll it'll last you the whole week here Okay, so we got the recipes from uh, allrecipes.com. It's good to get everything all laid out here. That way you're not uh, going through and uh, trying to find uh, these utensils. And uh, I, I, I don't like germs, man. I'm always uh, washing my hands and cleaning. And, and I go through almost a half a roll of... Uh, paper towels here washing my hands and just making everything right giving you a good overview here and uh, pretty much common uh, stuff here I didn't have to go to some uh, a gourmet place here to get some of this stuff you can get all this stuff at your local grocery store and uh, yeah, sometimes that that one purchase there seems a lot for that first meal, but think about it. Some of these ingredients here can be used on other meals. And uh, and before you know it, you'll be, you'll be eating out less and eating out more at home, healthier, and you can control the portions of ingredients and get the satisfaction of cooking too got two pounds here of uh, Angus uh, beef stew here stewed beef they call it beef there okay well I got everything cut ahead of time to save on uh, the video time here we're all familiar on dicing and slicing and peeling and, and whatnot and so forth. So right now I'm going to be doing up the uh, the sauce or the uh, the broth here. So uh, after thinking about it here, I do have uh, one thing out of the equation or or my setup there is a measuring cup. So I can uh, so I can measure out the broth. Yeah, measure out the broth here. Okay. So we're gonna hit right out of here. <clears throat> I'm not a professional uh, video guy. Uh, pretty much straightforward. This uh, Kodak camera doesn't have a pause button, and uh, that's just the way it is here. So, so in a small bowl here, I need some flour, quarter cup of flour. And we've got a quarter cup of flour. And 
then salt. We're skipping the salt. I, I feel all this stuff here has enough seasoning to make up for the salt. But the uh, black, black pepper here, that's a whole different story. We could have some black pepper. Okay. Black pepper. Looks like we're looking for, uh, what are we looking for here? Half a teaspoon. So I'm using a teaspoon measure and I'm doing half. Black pepper. Brown black pepper. I'm not uh, promoting any brand or anything here. These are all things you get at the store. So we got black pepper and we got uh, paprika. Yep, we got some paprika here. I'm going to throw in. I'm calling for a uh, teaspoon. There we go. Paprika. Gotta love that paprika here. And um, garlic. They're saying one clove. Well, I'm not sure what one clove equals. So I'm going to estimate here. I love that garlic. Yeah. After seeing everything here, that looks pretty good. Whew. Has a good smell to it also. A bay leaf. Now this is pretty neat because uh, I've never done anything with bay leaves before and they're saying they add one. So we're adding one. Smells pretty good. Yeah. And Worcestershire sauce. And we're looking for uh, one teaspoon here. That little spout thing here. That way you can drizzle, do some drizzling. There we go. Yeah, be back in a second. So, uh, everybody, I mean, it's really not rocket science when it comes to cooking. It does take some time. When you think about it, if you're uh, attached to the radio there on the weekends, unfortunately, some of you guys are, uh, are at home a lot due to certain reasons, and that's fine. And uh, there's nothing like a good meal slowly cooking through the day there. So I'm going to give you a review of what's in here. Because we're going to add one the last and final ingredient here soon. We have a quarter cup of uh, all-purpose flour. I skipped the salt. A half a teaspoon of uh, ground black pepper. Uh, one clove garlic minced. Well, I chose to get it all done up here and I estimated. Uh, a bay leaf, one bay leaf, teaspoon of uh, paprika, teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and now I'm going to be adding the one and a half cups of beef broth. Yeah, I like to shake things, add a little air in there. One and a half cups. Yeah, then we're going to mix it right up there. Mix it right up. There we go. One and a half cups of the old beef broth. See that has salt in it. Let's see what it has for sodium. 
970 milligrams per one cup. So see how leaving out the salt there we go. Now everybody is going to be dancing in that bowl. Oh yeah. We're going to all stir it up. Sorry to flatter here. Yep. Can you picture doing this? Alrighty. Bay leaf is still there, didn't get broken down. That's okay. I don't know. I'm going to add another bay leaf in the uh, crock pot there. So everything's all in there. Got a little bit on the table though, that's okay. I cleaned this table. A little bit of uh, Clorox bleach and mixture there. Clean it again later. By the way, uh, this I would say this is a vintage uh, table. You don't see these tables like this. Used to be my grandmother's table here. Remember going up north there to Van Buren, way up north in, in Maine, Arusta County, and, and eating at this table when I was a young kid. Okay, here we go with the master stuff here. Let me reposition this camera. Let's see, we'll go on this side. And my only worry is that as far as everything fitting in there. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So, let's see what we go, got going on here. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to add the contents in here. And of course, you can do it any way you want as far as how you want to do it. I got a big crock pot here. When I brown the meat, I add a little vegetable oil in the frying pan. I'm adding a little bit on the bottom. I'm doing it in layers. Whoa! Okay, do it in the layers a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I've got a little bit on the table I'm going to pick up. There we go. See, you want to have the hardest stuff on the bottom. That's where most of the heat's going to be. Later on, you're going to want to stir the pot up a little bit, not stir and crush everything down, but kind of fluffing everything up. Then I'm going to add some more meat. Get the old meat in there. Um, onions. There we go. Yeah. I'll tell you what. What, what was on the uh, recipe and this this big size crock pot is going to be perfect perfect and last we got some celery here yeah and the broth mixture pour that right up top Noticed there was a little bit of the paste there, that uh, mixture there that settled to the bottom. Mm -hmm. See when all this when all this cooks down, there's going to be more fluid, and that's where you'd want to flood flood everything here 
with broth. I got a bay leaf up top here that was in there. Yep. I'm gonna add two more. That smells good. There we go. Now, before I uh, call it good, I'm just going to look over everything. So what do we have? We got our uh, beef. I put it in two different layers here. That way not all of it's on the bottom and not all of it's on the top. You get your hardest vegetables on the bottom first. And um, so I got, the, I got the beef there. I got potatoes, carrots. Uh, then I put the, the rest of the beef on there and uh, put the celery and I put some onions up top and then I stirred up the beef broth, the mixture there and I poured it right on top and I added two more bay leaves here so uh, looks like I'm good to go good to go So we got a spot here in the kitchen where it's safe to have the crock pot. Okay. What they're saying is four to six hours. Or 12 hours on uh, on low. So I'm going to be doing the four to six hours. They didn't take long for all that stuff to get dumped in that crock pot. Okay. So we got this lovely uh, beef stew that's going to be uh, cooking in four to six hours here. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have the link of uh, the recipe that I used on uh, my website there. Yeah, just an idea, you know, the cold weather's coming and it's soup and stew season. Maybe something that you want to brew up for your uh, office Christmas party. I think I'm going to be doing that this year. So you take care, everybody. This is Reno. Bulldog unit 777 right here in Central Maine or in this case Chef Bulldog. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye bye.